Hello friends, welcome back to this video on analog communication. In this video, we are going to discuss the ratio detector. We have already studied about the Foster Sealer detector. If you have still not watched my previous video, I recommend you to watch my previous video first. So here in this video, we are going to discuss first why ratio detector is required. After that, we will see its circuit, its working, its advantages and disadvantages. So why it is required? In the Foster Sealer discriminator, I was talking about the drawback and the drawback of the Foster Sealer discriminator was the limiter cannot be used, which is the biggest drawback because we cannot use the noise limiter and now the amplitude would be having variations because of noise. So the noise is affecting my output. So I don't have any way out of this situation. So now in ratio detector, we have inbuilt amplitude limiter. So it's the better version of the Foster Sealer discriminator. So talking about the circuit. So again, it's having the same circuit. So here we have the input, which is empty, which is connected to a capacitor and an inductor so now it is tuned to fc like in foster sealer discriminator now here we'll be having a coupling capacitor which is connected to the center tapped secondary so this is the second secondary inductor which is center tapped and here at the center we have again an inductor so now Here we'll be having only one capacitor in the secondary as well. So this is LS, this is CS. So now here after this, what we used to have? We used to have a diode D1. So here this diode is reversed. So this diode D2 is reversed. This diode D1, both are ideal diode again. So now here it is connected to a capacitor. So this is C1, this is C2. Now it is connected to resistor. So this is R1, this is R2. So this was the circuit which we used for envelope detector. So from here, we have another circuit, so it is connected to two resistors. So both are having values R and now it is connected to a high value capacitor. Let's take it C3. So now we'll be taking output with the terminal P1, P2. So from here, we'll be measuring V output T. So now if I talk about, this is the circuit of ratio detector. So now I hope you are clear about the circuit. So take it, it as RFC, this to be LSCS. Okay, oh, I have mentioned all of them. So this is LP, this is CP and we have winding in between. So it is acting as a transformer. So now I hope you are clear about the circuit now. So now here in the circuit, we have this primary capacitor, primary inductor. So it's the tank circuit, which is tuned at FC. It is also tuned at FC. So now like in my previous video, I was talking about the working. So here at the diode D1, will be getting the output because from here the coupling capacitor is providing the input voltage. So here the output would be VL1 plus V in. So here we are providing V in to this inductor with the help of the coupling capacitor. So now here VL2 plus V in would be the voltage at this diode D2. Now, this diode D1 is in the front direction, but I have reversed the diode D2. So now here, the output voltage, if I measure the output voltage here, according to my previous 
video where I was discussing about the Foster Seeley discriminator. There the output voltage was V output 1. So V output 1, the output was the output voltage at R1. So if I am taking V01 to be output voltage at R1 and V02 to be output voltage at R2. So V output T would be V01 minus V02. But now here I have reversed the direction of D2. So V output T would be V01 plus V02. So because of the D2 is because D2 is reversed. So now I hope you are clear how I got this output equation. So this output is V output T which is the output here. So this is I am terming it as V output dash because I am taking the final output to be V output T. So taking it to be V output dash so the V output dash is here. So now V output dash T is distributed evenly at this R and this R. So now if I talk about the voltage at this R, it would be V output dash T by 2. So how I found out? By, because at the same resistor I will be having series combination. So because of series combination, the voltage is equally divided between the equal resistors. I hope you know that. So now here also we will be having V0 v dash T by 2. So now if I talk about the output voltage. So the output voltage would be the voltage at P1 minus the voltage at P2. So this is my V output T. So what is the voltage at P1? So the voltage at P1 is given by, by voltage at R2. So the voltage at R2 is V02. You can see from here the voltage at R2 is voltage at P1. So this is the voltage at P1. Now this is the voltage at P2. So now if I subtract V0 P1, and V naught P2, I will get the V output T. So V naught 2 is V naught P1. So V naught P1 is V naught 2 minus V naught P2 is V naught dash T upon 2. So now we will find out what is this V naught dash T is V naught 2 minus putting the value of V naught dash T which is V naught 1 plus V naught 2 upon 2. So now if I find out it would be V naught 2 minus V naught 1 upon 2 is V naught T. So you can see the output is varying with respect to the voltages. So now uh, when I have F is equal to FC. So at F is equal to FC both of the voltages induced here and here would be same. So V01 is equal to V02. So whenever V01 is equal to V02, I can find out V0 T is equal to 0 because V02 minus V01 upon 2 would be 0. So now taking the next case when F is greater than FC. So now when F is greater than FC, now here when F is greater than Fc, this induced voltage V02 minus V01 upon 2 would be greater than 0. When F is less than Fc, V02 minus V01 upon 2 would be less than 0. So V output T is less than 0 in the case of F is less than FC. So similarly, I can have the frequencies in between F minus del F and FC and F plus del F and FC. So my voltage is varying. So now it has converted into the amplitude modulated wave. This is this part. Again, it's an envelope detector and it will detect the envelope. So now I hope you are clear. It's the same way we were talking about the Foster Seeley discriminator. But here we are taking 
the output which is divided by 2 so now if i talk about the v not 1 upon v not 2 so whenever this output would change the ratio would change so ratio changes according to the voltage so whenever the ratio changes according to the voltage my output voltage would change and this output voltage changed due to ratio change thus it is called the ratio detector so now if the output voltage change because of the ratio change when the output voltage is changing it is converted into the amplitude modulated signal so this amplitude modulated signal can be easily detected with the help of envelope detector and now why we included this circuit so this circuit is acting as an inbuilt limiter so I was talking about the limitation of my previous method that was Foster Sealer Discriminator that the limiter is not there and because the limiter was not there the distortions due to amplitude change due to noise would be there so here it has the inbuilt limiter so here the problem due to noise would be not there because of this inbuilt limiter we have made the voltage of the modulated signal constant with the help of this inbuilt limiter because here we are using very high capacitance value c3 so now talking about the advantages so the first advantage is less affected through noise due to inbuilt limiter so this is the first advantage now the second advantage is that it has simple circuit high bandwidth this would be the third advantage it operates over larger bandwidth and the fourth advantage is that it has high linearity so as i said the ratio would be changing whenever i change the output voltages and the output voltages are changing with respect to the change in the frequency so why the frequency was changing in the modulated signal the frequency was changing because of the message signal so in the frequency change the message information was there so the information of message which was present in the frequency change now converted to the voltage change so this is amplitude modulation which is detected here so now this is highly linear because it is the ratio which is changing the ratio is changing linearly so here we'll be having the best linearity so now if i talk about this advantage so the first disadvantage is that it cannot be implemented over the ic circuit so this is the very large disadvantage of the ratio detector so because of this disadvantage it was popular till 1970s only after that it was not that popular so now if i talk about the second disadvantage the second disadvantage is that it is costly so here i'll be stopping my discussion on the ratio detector i hope you understood each and everything which i discussed here still if you have any doubt you can put the doubt in the comment and i'll try to resolve it as soon as possible i hope you like this video if you like it share it with your friends subscribe the channel and push the like button thank you